Good morning, y'all. Today we talk about summer squash, zucchini, and cucumber. And the things that I use in my garden to achieve this daily. And we hope that this is daily. We're going to talk about black pepper paste. We're going to talk about garden tone, one of my favorites. And then we're going to talk about bone meal. Good morning. Today is video number two in the playlist. What did I title that thing? The Basics to Gardening. Something like that. I mean, even the title is as, as simple like my gardening is. But if you're wondering what I'm looking down at, I'm making my black pepper paste. Let's get this mixed up and talk about this for a second. This is ground black pepper. Ooh, mosquito got me. It's early morning and yeah, the sun's out. That's how the consistency of my black pepper paste is. And this is just ground, fine ground, cheap black pepper. Um, and I keep some out here in the garden you can get any brand, dollar store, Walmart, it don't matter. And just put enough water to form this paste. And I always use this pencil to apply it. And I left a squash open this morning when I was picking on purpose. Now, I'm going to demonstrate with this pepper paste. But then I'm going to go in and I'm actually going to cut that that open door out and I'll take the camera and try to set it up and explain. So, you know, y'all, y'all can get a visual, but the reason why I wanted to leave it and show y'all what you can do if you're not able, because some of the squash and zucchini, they're hard to maneuver your cut, your cutters in. Sorry. Oh, whew, it was a lizard. All I saw was his tail and a, and a noise. It's a lizard. I am loaded in lizards, and I'm not complaining. The whole garden is full of lizards. So, we like to keep them. Where was I? Oh, yeah, where your cutters need to be, sometimes it's very hard to get that full branch of that zucchini and that uh, squash right up against the main base. Uh, you know, I struggle with my hands. So a lot of times I'll leave an open door and I'll show y'all until Buddy can get home and remove it because he has uh, steadier hands than I actually have. So, because when I get in a bind, I can't, you know, push down on my cutters. But anyway, I left it open, which is one I can get to, but I just wanted to show you what you can do until you can get that door closed. But the one thing that cucumbers, squash, and zucchini have in common is they all can be companion planted. You still have to allow room now. I mean, you know, but that's why you see my cucumbers and squash and zucchini kind of housed together, allowing decent space. If I had more, I'd separate them. But, you know, I've got to work with what i got. But those are great companion plants. So you're probably going to say, well, won't they cross-pollinate? Mm -mm. Now, how would I put it? It's like a dog and a cat. They don't populate. Same goes for a cucumber and your squash family. They won't cross-populate. Y'all, that lizard is going to drive me nuts. So, you can put them in the same area. You don't have to worry about it. But the key ingredient to feeding these three varieties is at the beginning, you can give them a liquid equal part, or you can do a, a 3 4 4 but I prefer to do 
fish emulsion. Dilute by three when they're at their start. So we have seeds started. We have two leaves that come up. That's not a true leaf, applies to a tomato. But the difference between like a tomato, a fruit, and these, squash, zucchini, and cucumber, their true leaves do not come up secondary. Their true leaf comes off the top of the first initial leaves. So always remember it's coming off the top. Why is that? Well, it's a simple solution. It's vining. What does it need? It needs energy. It needs root stimulating. It does not need to green up and grow. So therefore, I dilute my fish emulsion one time by three, and I will do the 10, 10, 10, 5, 5, 5, 4, 4, 4, one time when they're in the seed trays is when I'm actually going to give them a taste of nitrogen. That's it, one time. Okay, so we've moved them to their permanent house. Ground, bed, pot, whatever their permanent house is. And that's when I'm going to give them the garden tone. And that's a 344 dilute by half. I will do that every seven days twice. So the first day I'm going to dilute the garden tone by half and I'm going to stir it, dissolve it, and I will feed as soon as I plant. Seven days later, I'm going to do the same thing. Dilute by half. And that's it. I'm shutting the garden tone off. Then I'm going to go to, and I've got y'all tilted up on this, so I'm just going to have to hold the camera. Hang on, let me set y'all down so I can get this box. Now I got you in my hands trying to hold it up. I feel like Vanna White. See this bone meal? I've had this probably two years. Okay, this is the, this is the brand I prefer, and it goes a long ways. You see the number on here? It's a five, five, no, it's a 315 zero. Still a little bit of nitrogen, but what am I concentrating on? The phosphorus. Because that, oh, I don't want to lose my tomato. Because that is what the zucchini, squash, and cucumber hunger for, is the phosphorus. Now I got you propped back up on the bone meal box. <laughs> but any brand will do. That's what these three vegetables want. So it's easy. You get you some bone meal. We've, we've done the first seven day, the second day, the second seven days with your 344 garden tone or whatever you choose to use as long as that nitrogen is well below than your phosphorus and your potassium. They can be equal parts because you're only feeding it twice, half dilute. So it doesn't matter whether it's a liquid, a granule, water soluble, you know, you have to see what's best for you in your budget and what you're comfortable using. But on the bone meal, we've skipped, we've done the seven, the seven, seven days later. So now we're at 21 days from the time we put that plant in its house. That's when I'm going to give it bone meal by half. They're not heavy feeders. They're drinkers. And there's a, there is a big difference. So I'm gonna give it bone meal by half, and then I'm gonna wait 14 days, and I'm gonna give it the same bone meal by half, and I'm done. I will not feed my squash, my cucumbers, or my zucchini thereafter. They don't need it, because you have given them enough at the start. They're vining. So by concentrating on the bone meal, we're strengthening, we're promoting bloom because that's what we all want. These are not longevity. It's not like an indeterminate tomato where you can go all the way to your next frost date. Really and truly, the key to these three vegetables is start as early as you can. Get them done before your temperatures start reaching that high peak. When them temperatures start reaching that high peak, that's when the bugs come in. 
they're looking to lay, they're looking to drink. All of these hold moisture because we're gonna be watering them and we'll get to when we water. So the sooner you can get them planted and get them gone, in other words, when they start spinning, you can see that they'll yellow, they'll droop, uh, you won't see as many blooms, you know, and I normally get about 10, 12 weeks. That's it, and I pull mine. I do not want to invite predators that is not just gonna destroy them, but then make a house somewhere else in my garden. So by the end of June, 1st of July, these plants are getting pulled. They may be viable. There may be one or two left on there of blooms. That's fine. I'm pulling them. So therefore, I'm not inviting predators. So we've got the baseline of when we feed, what we feed, and how you choose to use it. Liquid, water-soluble, granules, that's your choice. The main thing is the bone meal, the um, phosphorus. So now we have to move to the plants because there's a lot to be shown in these plants and we'll talk about watering. Yeah, Lippy fixing to set y'all up inside. Yeah, we gonna make it work, y'all. This is Lippy's uh, class. Mm-hmm. Could y'all see me as a teacher? Sweet baby Jesus. All right, got my pace. Let me grab y'all. I need some water. But let's go get up in some plants and see what we can do. Yeah, it's shady under here. Hope I can get up. But do you see this right here? Let me see if I can see that hole. That's because I cut off a leaf that had yellowed and that's natural because it was laying on the ground. But we will definitely be cutting that off because that hole warrants predators. So now we're going to add some black pepper paste. And as I'm adding it, I'm going to explain what this is good for. Now I'm doing this keeping the camera still, so I don't know if I can get into this or not. It's not going to take much. I'm just kind of going around and daubing it because I'm not going to be watering, so I'm not worried about it getting in there. Did it show up? Yes. And that's really all that you need. There's no vine board that's going to come and say, oh, there's an open door. Let me get in. They don't like it. Now, let's move down. I'm making a mess over here. And I am going to just put, tell you what, let me use my fingers on this. I am just going to put a little bit, it doesn't take much, y'all, right around here. I'm going to go about from the base, see, right here. A little bit more and that's going to ensure you see it doesn't take much how about we do a little bit more down here because that's where they really like to go and also you'll see that I keep mine undercut that way my eyes can see what's going on that's all you're gonna need here is a cucumber plant we're gonna use this as an example you see I have cleaned all the leaves around why is that? Because I want airflow. I want the airflow to be able to get through this plant. Also allow the bees to find the blooms. And it will just grow and grow and grow. Y'all remember these cucumbers from yesterday's garden update? And I told you I had to come in and clean? Well, you see, I did. There's my pile as well as this one. My eyes can see, it can breathe, I can fertilize, just like that, at a distance from the main stem, cover it back up, water, life is good. Y'all look down in here. 
Now, I've been blessed. I have more bees. I don't know where the flower went. I have more bees in this garden, in this area, than I've had in four or five years. And you can see her or him just a working. See? But you see, that's a female. That's a female squash bloom. Here is the male. Now, underneath this female, you're going to see the actual squash. There'll never be one on a male. So, early morning is when they pollinate. The best thing to do is pinch this off and remove the leaves, bend them over, come up in here, and self-pollinate. Just like that. Now, I'm making it mad because it wants to do the job. So, the reason why I brought this out here to show... I know some of you, and I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'll, some of you choose to use a cotton swab. I don't use a cotton swab because of there is the potential for a piece of thread to come off as you're pollinating and get into the stem, the, the female, the insert, say it like that. I don't know how I'm supposed to say it on YouTube, so we're going to leave it like that. And you're risking the oxygen. You're risking what if you did get a pollinator? What if that cotton thread happened to get as it was sucking the nectar and moving the cross-pollination from the male to the female? And it digested, and there's research that shows that it does. Then... What have you accomplished? I'm not saying it's going to happen every time, but because there is a chance of, I would opt to going to a dollar store, a dollar tree, getting those craft paintbrushes. They're long sticks, red, green, yellow. They're like all color coded. And a little bitty brush, you get them for a buck, buck 25 now at the dollar tree. And use those. To color coat use the red one as your tomato use the yellow one as your squash your green as you know zucchini whatever you, you can wash them and reuse them and it's safer to pollinate from the male to the female than the q-tip i personally just opt to be as natural as i can and take this male and do what i just showed y'all it's simple it takes a second, and this is how I help, which I haven't done it this year because I don't see where I need to. Like I said, we have a lot of bees here, and I'm very thankful. And I have a chicken that obviously just laid an egg. Um, let's touch on cucumbers. I don't pollinate or yeah, I don't pollinate my cucumbers. I don't. Um, I have never seen where doing those little flowers has ever helped, nor has it hindered. I've just never done it. I don't see the need. Majority of the cucumbers that I grew this year was strictly for pickling. They wasn't for just eating, snacking on these. I needed to plant for pickling, relish, and so forth because I am out. So just like my tomatoes, I concentrated on the paste. So, you know, you gotta find what it is that you're wanting, but cucumbers don't even waste your time. It's not necessary, I promise you. I think the chicken's out, that's what I think. So, um, I think I touched on everything that I do. Water, there we go, water, I knew there was something. I water consistency, consistent weekly. I don't overwater, but they require water. Each one of these, squash, zucchini, and cucumbers on a regular basis. If you get a good rain, take that rain date, wait seven days. Now, if you're in triple digits and it's hot as Hades, you may not be able to wait seven days. Take your finger, go down. If it's moist here, you're good. If it's dry here, you need to give it a little drink. But like if we had a rain today, I would count seven days but watching my temperature. 
but those are as regular as regular can be. Cucumbers even like more water, but they don't like wet feet. So you kind of got to learn the balance with that, but a rule of thumb is every seven days, unless you're in triple digits. Also, take your cucumbers off the vine. Like here is a good example. I missed this one. This is the size that I wanted. You see this? It was hanging and I missed it. Y'all, I'm bad about, I can't see cucumber. I guess because I'm colorblind, I don't know. So I have to always have somebody come in behind me. But the more that you pick, the better production you're gonna get. If you leave a lot of cucumbers on your plant, your cucumber is gonna signify it's done. Seriously, a cucumber will. So always try to remember to really pick when those cucumbers start coming in, you're gonna have them every day. Whether it be two, whether it be 12, try to stay on top of picking your cucumbers. You're gonna get a much longer span life of your cucumbers. So yeah, I think I've pretty well covered what I needed to cover, I think I did. I'll probably get better at this. We have four more videos to do. Um, tomorrow, let's talk about beans. That is gonna be a good one. I'm trying to think of things that all of us pretty much grow the same. Beans, we're gonna go into a whole different world, a whole different feeding. I think you'll find it interesting. But I hope your Memorial Day is going well. Mine's in the sun, in the garden, and I'm thankful to have the freedom to do that. So, as always, stay safe, stay well, and God bless. Tomorrow, we talk beans. Mm-hmm.